Yeah, another free preset for DaVinci Resolve. This here is another great one, and it's the M Cam Rig. This is an awesome little add-on which allows you to do those animated camera movements really quickly and easily in DaVinci Resolve. But this one is not from me. This is from our friends over at Motion VFX. Now Motion VFX did reach out to me, so this is a sponsored video, and they provided a 15% off discount code of everything in store, providing it's not already discounted. So if you want a bit of a bargain, just use the code MrAlexTech15 at checkout to knock 15% straight off. Winner. But I actually use Motion VFX packs in most of my videos because they're really simple to use, they look great, and it saves me loads of time. So I'm more than happy to talk about them anyway. So in this video, of course, I'm gonna give you a demonstration, show you how to use that M cam rig, but I'm also gonna give you a real quick demonstration of some of my other favorites, like the M Tuber 3, a really great pack for any YouTubers out there. M Tutorial, obviously the one I probably use the most, being a tutorial maker. And then one of our latest, which is that M Callouts Simple 2, which are proper tracked callouts, of which there is also a free sample, so you can download it for free, try it out, make sure it runs okay on your system. But before we get into all of that, let's open up DaVinci Resolve and take a quick look at this freebie, the M Cam Rig. So here we are on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve, and I've got this image on my timeline, which we're gonna use for this demonstration. So once you've installed the M Cam Rig, we just need to add it onto our image. So we're gonna open up the effects library, top left hand corner. Within the toolbox, you go to effects and you can expand that just clicking on the little arrow to the left. You should see motion VFX, expand that, find your M Cam Rig, and within there, there's just one simple tool, give it a click and then drop it onto your image on the timeline like so. And if we go to the beginning and hit play, you can see we've got a real simple zoom in and then zoom out. Now we need to customize it, so we're gonna give it a click, open up the inspector, top right hand corner, go to the effects tab, and you'll see all of your M cam rig controls within there. You can turn off and on those in and out animations. I'm gonna leave them there for now. And then in the camera controls, this is where you control your sort of camera animations. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning, go to about here. We're gonna skip down first of all to this zoom. So we actually control the zoom level just by using the zoom in and out to see how much we actually zoom in. We can change the pivot, which is the area that we're zooming in to, by simply changing the pivot to move it around. So I'm just gonna reset my zoom pivot and my zoom. Underneath there, we've got all of these different rate controls. So this actually controls your movement animation. So if I just increase this zoom rate, what's gonna happen is it's gonna zoom in at the beginning and then throughout the entire animation, it's also gonna continue zooming in. If we want it to zoom in more throughout, we can increase our zoom rate or we can bring this back. We can actually go to negative numbers if we want it to zoom in at the beginning and then slowly zoom out as it goes. Underneath that, we've got our X and Y slide rate. So this just adds either lateral on the X axis or vertical movement on the Y axis. So if you want it to just move throughout the entire animation, you can add a bit of X and Y and it just gives it a little bit of movement like so. And then we've got pan. So pan, obviously just pans your image like so. You can again go to positive or negative numbers. If we just increase the pan, that will just put it on its axis like so, but not actually animate it. If we want it to be animated, we just increase this pan rate or decrease it depending on which way you want it to be animated. And then if we hit play and throughout the entire process, you can see the pan, it's just gonna animate like so, and then it's gonna flip out at the end. Obviously tilt is the same, but it's your left and right tilting. So what I would tend to do, I'd add a little tiny bit of pan and then a little bit of tilt. And then if we hit play, it'll zoom in, do our little movement all throughout, animating as we need to, and then it'll pop out at the end. And then last but not least, we've got roll, which just adds essentially some rotation to it. Again, you probably don't want to do too much, just a tiny bit, just to add that tiny bit of rotation like so. So that are all your camera controls, and then there's some additional things that you can do underneath. Now we're going to whiz through this, but in the effects controls, you've got things like sharpen. So if I tick that, it'll just sharpen your image, and then you can control how much sharpening gets applied. We've got prism. If we tick that, and then just increase our aberration distance, you can see you get this cool prism blur. It's almost like an RGB effect, and again, it'll pop in as it goes and animates throughout. We've got our Gaussian blur. So again, I'm just going to increase the amount and then we can choose the blur range, just increasing or decreasing this. This will actually follow the zoom pivot. So wherever your pivot point is, 
That'll also be your center of focus and it just gives it a really nice, almost bokeh depth of field sort of effect which works really well for images, slideshows and that sort of thing. We've also then got pixelate and a grid function. Now there are also mask and background controls, but I'm gonna skip those for now. If you want to know more about those, check out the Motion VFX YouTube channel, which I've linked down in the description below. It's simple and it's free, so what's not to like? Next up, we're gonna do a quick demonstration of this MTuber 3 pack. Now this is really great overall general pack for any YouTubers out there. It contains a great mixture of about 72 time-saving visual tools. So let's open it up and have a real quick look. So we're back on the edit page. Now I'm gonna open up my effects library once again, because the MTuber 3 pack contains a variety of different things, you need to remember that it exists within video transitions, titles, and effects. So if I just expand titles, for example, expand my motion VFX, you can see I've got my MTuber 3. If I expand that as well, we've got categories within there, and we've got our things like backgrounds, calls to action, chapter bars, intros, social media. So I'm gonna grab backgrounds, for example, they're really simple, you just drag, drop, put them on there, hit play, they animated in, they animate as they go, and then that animated out as well. As with anything, if you give it a click in the inspector, there's loads of controls within there, so you can change the colors, change how all of this looks really quickly and easily. Calls to action, these are great. These are things like subscribe to my channel, like the video, share the video, all that sort of fun stuff. This one in particular, it's really nicely animated and you can see there's a drop zone. So we're gonna pop that on there. And if we hit play, we just get this little animation popping up with the little subscribe animation like so. Now the cool thing with this, this drop zone can be customized. So if I just give this a click in the inspector, I go to my avatar controls and you can see it says file name and browse. So we can pick up basically any image to be replaced in this little center. So I'm gonna to go to browse and I'm just gonna pick up an image of me. So I've got me now in there and we can just change the media scale and the offset just to get it in the right spot. And then when we hit play, I'm just animated in with my subscribe button, everything else, easy peasy. The intros, again, really nicely animated intros. There's seven of those within here. And once again, they're really, really easy and simple to customize. So I'm gonna grab this intro too, and we'll just put it on my timeline. Hit play, we've got this really nice little animation popping in. Now again, we've got your logo written here. Obviously we don't want that. So instead, give it a click, inspector, we've got logo controls. We can change it to be logo or text. So if I change it to text, we can simply write the name of my channel. So I just put Mr. Alex Tech in there. But if I want the logo, I simply change that to logo. Again, I've got this custom logo with a browse. Give that a click. I'm gonna pick up my actual logo this time and it'll just drop it in there. And once again, if we go back, hit play, my logo is just gonna pop in. It's gonna be really nicely animated like so. We can change all the text, all the color, all the different effects to get this introduction looking exactly as we want it. We've then got things like social media. So we've got little social media lower thirds. We've got social media icons. These are really funky because they're all in 3D. So this is a really nicely animated, once again, 3D YouTube logo. But we've also got Vimeo, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, Snapchat, pretty much everything you need within there. And then lastly on this titles area, we've got typography, which are just little lower thirds and titles that are specific for YouTube. So they've generally got the YouTube logo on them and they're using the red and white color palette again because it's for YouTube. Down in the effects area, same thing, open that up, motion VFX, within here we've got MTuber 3, and we've got things like corner screens, this is great for any gamers, you just pop that effect onto something and it'll pop it down in the bottom right hand corner, great for sort of webcam videos. And then we've also got tools. Now the tools, there's loads of additional things, so we've got additional screens, we've got dashed selection boxes, we've got little indicators, as well as something like this, which I really like, which is just a little specs pop out. So I'm going to just drop this on this clip here. And if we go to the beginning, hit play, this little specs box pops up. If we go to the effects, let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see exactly what it is. And you just list the specs within there. This is particularly useful if you're doing any sort of beta or you want a really quick way of just listing through the specs of an item, you can just do it like that. Now, last but not least, the video transitions in the MTuber 3, we've got five Nice, unique, again, following the YouTube color palette, but it can be changed if you want to. Little transitions which work really well and look really, really funky. 
Now, if you're more of a tutorial creator like me, then the M Tutorial Pack might be a little bit more up your street. It's not dissimilar from the M Tuber Pack, but it's focused more on tutorials and the more corporate side. It's a little bit cleaner, a little bit more stylish, that sort of thing. So it's a really, really nice one. It contains a total of 107 presets. And again, we've got things like titles, placeholders, transitions, backgrounds, all that sort of fun stuff. But my favorite are the focus effects. These are really swish little animations which just allow you to focus people's attentions on certain things on screen. I actually use these an awful lot in all of my videos and I do quite often get comments from people asking how I did the effects. And it's from here, it's from this M tutorial pack. So let's swing back into DaVinci Resolve and I'll give you a real quick demo. So much like MTuber 3, M tutorial is split up into different categories. So within the video transitions area, within the effects library, I've got my M tutorial, and then we've got the transitions within here. Now again, these are really nice transitions which are specific for trainee or tutorial style content. So as you can see, we've got this one, Let's move on to another subject and it just transitions between your two shots. Any of these, once again, can be customized really quickly by going to the inspector and just using the controls within there. If we scroll down to the titles, motion VFX, let's go to the M tutorial, and then you've got a bunch of things within here. So we've got these really nice little add-ons, things like little mouse click icons and highlights, as well as these keyboard shortcuts, which again, I use all the time in my videos. It's really easy, you just drop it on there, give it a click, reposition it as you need to. If you go to the button controls, you can select how many buttons you actually need to display. So in my case, let's say it's two. And then in the button controls, you just specify what the keyboard keys are. So in this case, let's say it was shift, and control, type that in there, job done. And if we go to the beginning, hit play, just animate in and out as required. Again, you can change the font, the size, and do all that sort of fun stuff. There's really nice professional looking backgrounds with not too much going on, they're not too jazzy. They've got some nice animations, but they're nothing too crazy. We've got guides, things like the golden ratio there these little aspect ratio guidelines as well as a grid. If we scroll down, we've got a bunch of lower thirds. These are just nice lower thirds for introducing chapters or different sections of your tutorial or intros, that sort of thing. Underneath there, we've got a bunch of calls to action. Now these are nice little animations that don't really fit into any other category. So we've got things like a price for a course, We've also got a difficulty level, so you can rate the tutorial, just a nice swish little animation. Down here, we've got this one, individual user with details of the course. You can maybe put multiple of those on screen once and give people the option. We've got more pointers, so you can highlight things on screen. And then we've got a bunch of titles as well. Once again, you can see that I've got your logo written on this title here. If I pop that on my timeline, I can give it a click, go to my logo controls and can change the logo as we need to, to make sure that it fits with my brand or whatever we need. Now, if we pop down to the effects area, motion VFX, M tutorial, and then we've got a bunch of stuff within here. We've got this focus area and then placeholders. These are the ones that I use the most probably because these focus tools are really nice ways of highlighting things on screen if you're doing a tutorial. Now, I like to apply these with an adjustment clip. I find it a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna to go to my effects, grab an adjustment clip, put it on there, go back to M tutorial. Let's just grab this one here, focus number four, pop that on my adjustment clip, and it's just gonna open up. Don't forget about this part, highlight the section on screen, and then animate out. If we give it a click in the effects area, content controls, Let's just adjust this, make it a bit bigger. I want it to be right over this sort of box, something like that. Hit play. And there we go. It's a really nice way of highlighting things on screen. If I don't want that one, I'm just going to delete it using my little trash can icon. If we just scroll down, we've got this focus number 12. This is the one I like personally. I generally use this. If we hit play, it just zooms in blurs and darkens everything out so you can just see whatever's in the box. If that's too dark, effects. Effects controls, you can actually just turn down the background blur or change the color of the overlay, whatever you need to get it looking just right. And then last but not least, we've got these placeholders. Now these are generally sort of picture in picture things. So if you're doing a tutorial and you want to have a little face cam, bottom right hand corner, you can do that. As well as displaying multiple different images with things like this outcome comparison one, or you want people to be able to choose a level, you can just stack these. So let's drop this one on here. 
We've got the intermediate on the left. Make a quick duplicate of that in the effects area. Content control, make this one the right one. And now we've got both a left and a right. We just changed the text for this to say advanced maybe. And then you've got a really nice animated intro advising people of the two different levels of your course and off you go. Really nice, really specific stuff that works really well for any sort of online tutorial content. And last but not least, we've got the M Callouts Simple 2 Pack. These are these tracked callouts which look great and work surprisingly well in DaVinci Resolve. However, they are a little bit resource heavy. Things can chug a little bit when you're doing that motion tracking. Now, because of that, they've actually released a free sample so that you can go test them out for yourself on your system to make sure they run okay before you spend any of your hard earned cash. Winner. Now, the method I'm gonna show you is the method which I found works really, really well and it's quick and easy to do, but there is a more detailed tutorial video by Motion VFX themselves, which I've linked down below. Fun fact, the video is actually created by our boy, Patrick Sterling, a fellow DaVinci Resolve YouTuber. So if you're into Fusion, definitely go check him out. I've linked his channel down below. Right, with that out of the way, last time, let's hop back into Resolve and I'll show you how this one works as well. So for these callouts, I like to use adjustment clips. So within the effects library, effects, adjustment clip, and pop it on there like so. Now, as they're callouts, you would expect them to be in titles, but they're actually not. They're actually under effects. So if you expand effects, expand the motion VFX, and then within here, you'll see your M callouts simple too. Give that a click, and then you've got all of your callouts within there. As you can see, there's 50 of them in total. You can scrub through any of them to have a little preview to see what they're going to look like. Let's go with this number 47. I'm going to drop this directly onto my adjustment clip like so. What we need to do, move our player to the very beginning of the adjustment clip like so. And then underneath your preview window, use your little drop down and then go to the fusion overlay. And it'll open up this, which looks a bit crazy, but don't worry. All the bit we're interested in is this bit here, which says tracker. So I'm going to grab this little box. You use the little box in the top left-hand corner of the tracker, move it around. I think that's my screen recorder makes it disappear when I'm moving it, but hopefully it won't for you. You can change the size of the box if you need to, and you just want to put this over your subject like so. So I'm going to go with something like that. Hopefully that should do the trick. Then with the adjustment clip still selected, in the inspector, go to effects, and then you've got these tracking tools at the very top. So all I'm going to do Hit this one on the right to play all the way through. And it's just gonna do the track for us. You'll see these track center references just doing something crazy as it tracks through the clip. Now, as mentioned, you could do this in Fusion, which is what Motion Effects actually advised to do, but I've found that this works really, really well. So there you go, it's done my track, did it really quickly. So we're just gonna click on OK. Now I can turn the Fusion overlay off just by clicking on the little icon. And now if we just scrub through, because it doesn't always play back in real time, but you can see that it's tracking my person on this mountaintop really, really well. It's actually spot on. It's done a perfect job there, and that took no time at all. If we give it a click, still within the inspector and the effects area, we can then control how that looks. So if I go to the callout controls, we've got this one here. It says callout movement. It's currently set to linked. What that means is the callout will move with the person, like so. If we want it to be static, we can change this to static. And then the only thing that will move is the little dot that's attached to the person, not the text itself. So as you can see, the text will stay in the same place, but it will just be tracking them with the little dot and the little line. I'm going to go with linked. And then we can just use this title position to put the title wherever we want. I'm going to go right in the top left hand corner like so. We'll hit play. It will pop in. It'll track, it looks really, really good. It's taken no time at all to do that tracking. We do have some additional tracking controls within here, as well as our title controls. So we can change the font, the size, the color of the background, all that sort of fun stuff, as well as our line controls under here and our track point controls as well. So as you can see, works really well. And there you go, that's just a small selection of some of the DaVinci Resolve packs which are available now from Motion VFX. Don't forget to use the code MrAlexTech15 at checkout to get your 15% off. Thanks for watching, take it easy. I'll see you next time.